we've been getting a lot of questions about uh, how to move Rhino geometry into Revit and uh, there's a few different ways to do this and uh, so I thought to make a quick video on how to move Rhino geometry into Revit in a way that can, you can do some quick drawings. Uh, this is not meant to be a, a workflow for later BIM stages, but this might be a good workflow uh, if you're trying to get something across quick uh, in order to get some drawings out, let's say, for a competition submittal or something like that. Uh, and so uh, we'll, we'll first here take a look at the uh, Rhino model here. What we have here is a model that is uh, all done in Rhino. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's a... Uh, just a, a quick model with some a little bit of site context, um, a couple of massing buildings for adjacent uh, context, and then everything here is split up into layers. Um, this is nothing more than curves and standard solids, um, nothing fancy. And uh, so the, the, the key is how, how can I take this information out of here very quickly and get it into Revit in a way that um, you can create a set of drawings. and um, so we'll open up Revit and uh, here, and and we have Rhino inside Revit running, and, and so we have uh, Rhino here. And so I'm going to use some grasshopper definitions to do this. Uh, there's different levels of, of we're going to use a lot of direct shapes here. And the, the way to transfer this over is, um, you know, we can do it in stages. And so the first one, which is the simplest, uh, uh, and let me show you where the, where direct shapes are. So direct shapes are, you know, go to Revit toolbar and right here. And we have a number of different ways that we can take to, we can take geometry out of Rhino across into Revit. Uh, today I'll be using the, the curve direct shape uh, very early. Uh, but one, uh, one that we use quite often is add geometry direct shape, which allows us to, to add not only the geometry, but actually add the direct shape to certain uh, categories, which is so important to control graphically how each one of these objects will look uh, when we're in Revit. And so the key is to kind of get everything categorized correctly. Um, so let's look at the at the first part of this. Uh, the, I'm using a, another plugin too, by the way. It's called Elefront, and Elefront is a is a is an add-on that that you can um, for Grasshopper. And it has very good tools to, for instance, find everything on a layer and then filter for, for instance, in this case, all the curves. So, so you'll see I do this quite a bit in this demonstration here is, is I'm taking everything on the site layer and then I'm making sure that they're all curves by the time they get filtered out. And then I've, I've come over here to the direct shape uh, curve. I'm just going to enable this. And so what it'll do is it'll go through, grab all those. You can see that it, it grabs the the, you know, creates the direct shapes. And if I look over in, in Revit here, you'll see that those curves now exist in this uh, 3D drawing. Uh, categorized as generic components or generic models for curves, that's not a bad thing. And, um, and so we have uh, our first uh, stage there, first piece of this. Now, another thing that people might want to do is actually uh, take across um, the, the massing, those those two adjacent buildings that you see in the in the Rhino the Rhino model are uh, these two blue buildings here. Those are on a certain layer. It's called side buildings layer. So again, using Elefront, I grab all the objects off side layers. I make sure that what I get are B reps or, or solids, and then um, you can see it grabs two B reps. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab I'm going to take that geometry and I put it in that direct shape component in this uh, direct shape add, geom add geometry direct shape and I have some other options here what I can do for instance is I can put in different names for those buildings which I've done right here under the name component I can also add obviously add the category in this case it'll there'll be masses and then uh, I, I actually can grab all the materials out of the drawing. I can assign a material to the direct shape. And um, if I enable this, let me go grab the, the material here. Um, blue solid will probably work. And then 
I can come in here and I'll enable the direct shape. And what this does is it reads through this and you can see it creates two direct shapes, one named North Building and one named South Building as you'd expect from the name here. Now, so these are these are nice masses and and we can see these in the in the drawing itself. But an additional thing that some people want to do is is you might want to this are, these are in the same category. They're both in the mass category. And with direct shapes, you can only assign direct shapes to main top level categories. So if you want to make a, a graphic difference between two direct shapes in the same category, what you need to do is use view filters. And uh, so we can do that uh, by, if I just come here, so I've created my two direct shapes. And then I push this into a common set element parameters. And I want to create a new parameter, a new uh, shared parameter and I can do this with the over in the parameter uh, toolbar uh, this new parameter is called display over uh, the toggle here is to make sure it's overwritten and then what I can do is I can actually add values to the to that new shared parameter on each one of these objects that I've pushed in here each one of these direct shapes and so now I have a blue and a green uh, value and you can see here what I can do is is on on this one here I have it uh, you know kind of a hatch pattern and this one here is a solid so I, I've been able to with view filters differentiate between the two if you need to learn more about view filters uh, in Revit um, you know you can just search on Google and uh, there's a number of uh, examples of this so now we have our context and we have our our two massing buildings. Um, now we get to go on to do the rest of the building here, which has over 27,000 elements in it. Uh, and they're all split by layer. So I'm going to just jump down here to this definition. So what this definition does, if you can see it here, is it has a, it has a list of layer names in that I want to get out of Rhino. And it has a list of of categories that I want each one of these those to be translated to. So the base plate layer in Rhino, I want it to trans translate to the floors layer category in Revit. And uh, beams, I want to go to structural beam systems. Uh, the the uh, objects on breezeway, I want to go to the walls columns in the lay columns layer goes to the columns category, so forth and so on. So I, I created these two two lists, and then what I can do is, what, using a key value search, uh, standard grasshopper key value search, I can search for each one of these layer names, and it will return the corresponding category. So if, if you uh, you know, it's going to search for each one of the layers, and it's going to respond, or it's going to return the category name which then I can query for. And so now going down this line, I have all the new category categories um, that I want to place these objects on. Uh, again, using Elefront down here, I can grab, uh, going from each layer here, I can grab all the geometry on each layer. I can make sure that each one's a B rep, in this case a solid. And then I'll run it into my direct shape component here. So I'm gonna get all these objects will come across on the correct category based on this tra string translation. And uh, so we will, um, I'll enable this here. This takes a couple minutes to, to um, process because there are quite a few objects uh, to go, but you can see that only took a few uh, or you know a few seconds really uh, there are uh, 23,079 uh, objects that just got baked into uh, Revit and so if we take a look at this now you can see that we have the building uh, we have materials on some of the building uh, we have um, you know different components you can pick on and look at and you can control different things. So now that now that they're all categorized properly, for instance, we can, uh, you know, in the plan view, we can have the hatching and the coloring work based on the category, the graphics of, of the category. So these are all the Rhino objects here, and you can see they're drawing a, a quick uh, floor plan. Um, also, you can come in here and you can see that 
that we can, uh, you know, through the colors and, and through Revit, create a quick elevation. And uh, so that is something that you could submit or print, um, whatever it is. So you can see that I quickly have, um, you know, different floor plans now. I have elevations and it just took a few seconds to get this this model into uh, Revit. Uh, what's nice about this, of course, is that if you're in Rhino and you make a change, you can just start with uh, another model or this model and and then push all the objects back in there again uh, and, and to update uh, the Revit model for a quick set of drawings that may work for you. Now, this is, um, it's important to note that, that by using direct shapes, it's really great for creating quick drawings. It's not something we might recommend for a longer term project or project where you're refining the information. And there's some other ways to push Rhino uh, information into Revit to be more, um, later in the process, to be more categorized and, uh, and work better within the, the Revit database uh, beyond just using direct shapes. But I'll cover that in a later video. I hope this is helpful and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks.